What up gamers and do I have a new build for you today and that is the Twin Terror Lux build. This comp is already pretty solid on the current patch but this comp, mark my words, will be absolutely busted on 14.7 because it's already good man and they are giga buffing this comp. Uh, so let's check it out. Here are the buffs if you guys are not into the no. Arc is being buffed at 4 and 6. Probably warranted. But that comp is definitely a comp that's hard to play most games but sometimes you can pop off. Uh, so the more important buff for us is going to be the 4 buff at 5 AP. Doesn't sound like a lot but that is 5 AP to your entire team. Which can be the difference between a Lux one shot in your corner unit and not one shot in your corner unit. Comboed with the Lux buffs, which I think are a complete mistake. Uh, she's being buffed at all levels. Maybe you could take a buff at one and two star, but they're buffing at three star, which is super relevant to us. And also the two star is very relevant to us in our build because we're going to play two different Luxes. We're going to play Twin Terror, right? Uh, so this is some very, very, very big buffs, which I think the one and two star is probably warranted so that she can be more of a consistent item holder. But I don't know about I don't know about her being buffed across the board. Like this, I think it's a mistake. This comp is going to be busted. So let's talk about the comp. What's the point of it? So the point of this comp is to have double Lux, same side, and you just instantly blow up a corner at the beginning of the fight. Instantly blow up their carry if you position on the correct side. And if you don't, you blow up their, their fodder unit and then you blow up their their actual carry the, on the secondary on the second rotation so that's the idea of the composition and then you just have a moo for some giga tanks it's the other three star that you're rolling for now when do you actually play this comp is this comp going to be so busted that you just full loss streak into this comp i don't think so i don't think it's going to be as busted as the executioner comp was in last set where you just you get it offered loss streak roll for it you're guaranteed to streak mid game i think lux is a lot more inconsistent of a unit and you know she depends on positioning that sort of thing and the comp is a little bit awkward because the only two star two cost that you're rolling for is luck so the roll timing can be a little bit awkward like it, a lot of times if you lost some health it's probably gonna be better to be on level seven when you're rolling so you're gonna hit your three stars kind of late so i don't think this is a a great comp to just play you just get offer the augment and use a hard force i think if you're in low elo you can definitely do that but if you're like close to like Grandmaster Elo or something like that, probably don't do that. Probably want to play it from a tempo opener. Like you get an RE2 star with like an Alawi drop or something like that, or you have the faded opener and then you start hitting some Luxes and you get off of the augment. I, I think that's going to be more of like the way, but I could be wrong. It could be good enough to hard force. Maybe at Prismatic, it's good enough to hard force, but definitely at gold, get the gold tier. I don't think it's good enough to hard force unless you can actually tempo with it on stage two and early parts of stage three. But regardless, assuming you tempoed into the comp, I think this is a slow roll on six comp. We're gonna slow roll for Lux. Now there's a little bit of awkward timings here because if you're not close to your Lux, you probably wanna go to level seven once you get onto stage four so that you can actually put the full board out there. Have two two-star Amumus out here and two two-star Luxes out here or a two-star Lux and a one-star Lux. We probably wanna have two two, two stars at least. Uh, I think that should make you pretty stable or semi-stable on stage four in most lobbies. So. If you're not close to your Lux, probably push seven to save some health on, on stage four and then slow roll from there and then send it on five one, assuming you're in a good spot health wise. If you're in a bad spot health wise, this is why I don't think this comp is super good to play from a lost streak opener. Could be wrong. Then you probably just want to send it for your Lux three and then and just save some HP that way and then push to seven and hope, hope that you can survive stage five and eventually get to your Lissandra. Maybe you lose some health and you hit a Lissandra on Carousel and that saves your game. So that's probably the two pathways you play, play Lux here. And let's talk about the three stars you're rolling for. You're only gonna roll for Lux and Amumu. You could potentially roll for a Lowey and Zoe. It's just probably too expensive because they don't fit on your board. The twin Terra copies will not fit because you need to play four arc uh, to really get the juice. So they just probably won't fit, but you know, it's something to consider. Now, why am I not rolling for Nico? Because you're probably like, you're only rolling for one, two costs. You're going to roll for Nico. I just don't think it's worth your gold. I think an RE three star would be way more worth your gold because it's only nine gold. Whereas, you know, the Nico is, you know, twice that value, but you know, twice the cost, but not twice the value. You know what I'm saying? So you could potentially roll for an RE three star. You'll never play the twin Terra copy. And I don't think it's necessary because as soon as you hit Lissandra, this girl is coming out of your comp because we want to get to four porcelain in game and i think that's how you cap your board here and so let's talk about augments before we talk about in game so an augment setup like this is going to be great for you jeweled lotus twin terror porcelain crest that's probably like the nuts and if you have this type of setup going for an itemization like this you have like a spear of sojin death cap and a guard breaker to get your crit chance up and to help you one shot the back line after you hit the shields on the front line like that is going to be a very 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 good setup uh, however if you don't have jeweled lotus 
you know, consider going like a Giant Slayer here or a Jeweled Gauntlet. I know everybody hates Jeweled Gauntlet. But consider going Giant Slayer here. It can be good for you. If you don't have Jewelos, if you have Jewelos, you definitely don't need Giant Slayer. You can one shot the front line at the end of the fight. But you potentially can have some very bad matchups into like tanky frontline comps, like a Yone style comp. Now, sometimes that matchup feels really easy, and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> like sometimes you just don't have the damage, but sometimes he just dashes right into your cast or dashes far away from you and you stun him. Like sometimes that matchup is really easy, but it's just kind of. You know, so you need to make sure you actually have the burst to kill things like Yone and that sort of thing. So just something to consider if you don't have Jeweled Lotus. But I think Jeweled Lotus is extremely good in this comp. Twin Terror obviously is the whole point of the comp. And then Porcelain Crest makes this so easy because whenever you cap this comp, you just swap out Ari for you just swap out Ari for Lissandra, and then you can play whatever you want after that. You can just play another Lowy 2 or something like that at eight. And that can be very good because if you don't hit a porcelain crest, you're going to have to swap out Ari. Or Lissandra, and then actually play an Ash, which you don't want to have an Ash on your board before Porcelain feels very good. So Porcelain Emblem very strong. Arcanus Emblem is a little awkward because you're going to have to put it on an Amumu on the second Amumu. Totally fine, but you have to be level eight in order to do that. So uh, you could potentially get an Arcanus Emblem. It's it's hard to use on level seven, so that's why it's a little awkward to take as an augment. It only really fits on eight. Whereas Porcelain is like you can put it on the Alawi and it feels good. Like it actually still feels good at three Porcelain. So I think that's why Arc is a little awkward because if you get the Arcanus emblem, once you're here and you you hit the Lissandra and then you get the emblem here on emblem here. I guess let's get the emblem going. Uh, you can't craft it; it is in the other section. But once you get the emblem, where is Arc? Arc, there it is. Uh, you can put that there and then you know add your Ari back or whatever. And then your comp at eight is really nice, but it's just a little awkward getting there because yeah. But if you get an early Lissandra drop, definitely take the Porcelain Crest. But even without it, just Porcelain Crest is 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 really good on your on your dudes. So again, uh, let's talk a little bit more about itemization here. So on we did talk about this setup. Let's talk about your secondary luck. So this comp is actually good to itemize the secondary luck. So once you get secondary carry items, unless you have a Lissandra, totally goes on Lissandra. Or unless you have a Zoe 3, I don't think you're going to have a Zoe 3. But I don't think you should look for Zoe 3. It's too expensive. But if you somehow hit a Zoe 3, you're naturally going to them. You can put items here. But if not, the secondary carry items will go on your secondary Lux. And ideally, you want to give a different mana gain item than Sojin or no mana gain item at all. Because you want them to cast at slightly different intervals because you want one to stun the front line, then the second one to stun the front line, and then the second cast will be the, be the cast that kills, kills the other one. So having slightly different mana gain items are going to be very nice. Now, if you end up building double Sojin, Sojin on this one, Sojin on that one, it's going to be fine. Uh, you'll you'll just delete, probably just delete their backline immediately. But the problem is like a lot of times you have some very redundant casts where the second Lux or, or your primary Lux just completely misses their ability because one of the Luxes kills their target already. So I think it's better to have slightly different intervals so you can just keep chaining that CC, be good to go. Now on a Mumu, we want to go just pure tank items. You know, the thing about it too hard, just put your tank items on a Mumu and put a spark up here. You could potentially put a shiv back here so you can make your a Mumu much tankier. There's also some tech where you can second row your Alawi and then you put the Ionic Spark here. And where'd my Ionic Spark go? Uh, put your Ionic Spark on your Alawi instead and just make sure you protect her. You might have to do more of a setup like this maybe, but that's some tech there as well. But yeah, you just want to load the tank items on. Anyways, guys, here's the comp. Good luck playing this. I think this is going to be very busted when you have the spot, when you have the opener. I think if you're in low elo, if you get Twin Terra Prismatic, definitely you can hard force. If you're closer to my elo, closer to like Grandmaster-ish elo, like that's the type of, you know, Grandmaster-ish peak players or low challenger, whatever. If you're around that elo, I think you probably don't force, no matter what. Uh, I think you just probably put with the tempo over. I could be wrong. Anyways, good luck climbing with this comp. It should be very fun. It's going to be a terror to play against. And if you're wondering how to counter it, just position your carry in the center, guys. That's how you're going to have to dodge these Lux players. Anyways, good luck, guys. I'll see you on the next one.